Although our thoughts often focus on the apocalypse and new creation when we think of the eternal city, perhaps we can learn most about the kingdom of God by looking at how that kingdom is expressed now on earth. We can see the final bliss of the new Jerusalem as the fulfillment and consummation of that which Christ is establishing by his presence on earth today through us. Thus, he taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Our final state is seen in the scriptures as the final fulfillment of the covenant of grace with God's people in history. Our history began in paradise, a place of covenant relationship that was broken and where the first announcement of the covenant of grace was given in Genesis 3.15. We are shown heaven as a paradise where the curse is removed and where God's covenant people serve him forever. Christ's victory over sin and death and the curse is cosmic and all-encompassing in scope. It was a victory for material creation, not simply for immaterial souls. Our final state is not the heaven where those who are now dead in Christ live. They still await the full realization of the kingdom. All of creation longs to be clothed with heavenly glory. Those who are alive while not wishing to die, nonetheless long for mortality to be swallowed up by life, as Paul puts it. The spirit given to us is a down payment and foretaste of this recreation. We are still waiting for our adoption as children, the redemption of our bodies, when the totality of covenant life in the city of God is fully realized. What does it mean then to live now as a citizen of the city of God, as a child of this kingdom that has come and is still coming? Our faith is a comprehensive faith that applies to every aspect of human life. If the kingship of Christ was recognized and applied in every realm, our individual lives, families, workplaces, society, and nation would be transformed as a result. God's plan in scripture is for redemption and restoration through Jesus Christ. His call is that the church work for this kingdom in every sphere of life, For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the psalmist says. The primary means of the kingdom is apologetic and evangelistic persuasion. That is regeneration, not revolution. Since the kingdom of God cannot be imposed by physical force and is not identical with Christianization. The kingdom of God is to be recovered and entered into with joy. As we persuade others and the kingdom grows... Christian truth, values, and law will be embraced and received, transforming a decaying humanistic culture. So then, what sort of a city and kingdom are we inheriting, and how are we to respond? Let us conclude by hearing the scriptures. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to my raids of angels in festive gathering, to the the assembly of the firstborn whose names have been written in heaven, to God who is the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, to Jesus, mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which says better things than the blood of Abel. I do not want to be ashamed of my life and service in the kingdom of Christ when I stand among the great saints and martyrs of the golden city and the new Jerusalem, and nor do you. Therefore, let us keep the faith and lay down our lives for the city of God, for we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we will see him. As Thank you is. for listening to this message brought to you by the Ezra Institute for Contemporary Christianity. To learn more about the Ezra Institute's mission to advance the Lordship of Christ, please visit www.ezrainstitute.ca.